Atlanta, 91, operator 7729, what's location emergency? Uh, 125 University. Okay, 125 University Southwest. Is it at the Wendy's? Uh, yes, ma'am. On Friday night, June 12th, an employee at a Wendy's restaurant in South Atlanta calls 911. Okay, tell me what's going on. Um, I have a car. I think he's intoxicated. He's in the middle of my drive-through. A 27-year-old man named Rayshard Brooks had fallen asleep in his car in the drive through lane. What kind of car is it? It's a white car. Ain't that sitting there? You can't miss me. One is he more. black? <laughs> is he black? Why is he Yeah. Is he black? Soon, two police officers respond. They and Mr. Brooks speak calmly and cordially for 41 minutes. But then, in just 45 seconds, one of the officers fatally shoots Mr. Brooks as he is running away. How could a routine police response go so suddenly and horribly wrong? Tell CPR is the progress. CPR. The Times examined witness videos, security footage, police body cam and dash cam videos. We synchronised and slowed down those videos so we can see and hear what unfolded. We reviewed police records and procedures and statements made by the officers involved. And we identified the critical moments and missteps that led to a young man losing his life. You don't remember what kind of drinks they were? No, sir. It's 10.41 p.m., eight minutes after the 911 call, when Officer Devin Brosnan arrives at Wendy's. He raps on Brooks's car window and wakes him up. Yo, what's up, my man? Brooks appears groggy and disoriented. Don't go back to sleep. Just pull over there. I got you. Okay, all right, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I want to deal with this dude right now. Brosnan, who joined the Atlanta Police Department last year, talks to Brooks and then requests an officer who can perform sobriety tests. We have uh, available DUI certified officers working in the zone right now. At 10.55 p.m., Officer Garrett Rolfe arrives. Rolf joined the Atlanta Police Force in 2013 and is an experienced DUI investigator. So he was in the drive? Yeah, he's, he's pulling cars on. Rolf has once been reprimanded for firing his service weapon, police records show. He takes charge of the investigation. Hey, Mr. Brooks. Hey. Mr. Brooks. How you doing? Hey, I'm Officer Rolf from the Atlanta Police Department. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Rolf begins to question Brooks, who is confused about where he is. Do you know where you are? Yeah, absolutely. Where I'm are in you? Forest Park, Old Dixie Highway. Old Dixie Highway in Forest Home Park? Home Lodge is there. He seems to think he's six miles down the road near a Home Lodge hotel. There's another Wendy's right beside it. How much have you had to drink today? I drank earlier. Okay. How much have you had to drink? That's when I had one drink. At 11.02 p.m., Rolf asks Brooks to get out of the car. Do you have any weapons on you or anything like that? I don't have anything on me. Is it okay if I patch down just to make sure? If you... I have just money, gas, and that was it. Is it okay if I patch you down to make sure you don't have any weapons? Absolutely. Right, can you just turn around face away from me real quick? Moments later, Brooks will also consent to a series of sobriety tests. What, 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 should, I, what should I do, sir? Brooks is clearly inebriated, but he's compliant and friendly throughout this time. Can you see the tip of my finger? Yes, sir. All right. The officers are courteous, and Rolf gives him clear and precise instructions. Don't start anything until I tell you to, do you understand? Yes, sir. I want you to imagine a straight line coming out from your left foot. When Rolf now asks Brooks if he'll take a breathalyzer test, Brooks hesitates at first. Hey, will you take a preliminary breath test for me? Uh, what's, what's that? It's just a little handheld machine. I have you blow into it, and that lets me know if you're uh, positive or negative for the presence of alcohol in your breath. I've, I've been drinking. Okay. Brooks offers to go to his sister's house. I don't, I don't care about I can walk home, park here, lock the car up, and do everything that I need to do within the presence of you guys. I can just go home. I have my daughters there right now. My three, my daughter's birthday was yesterday. All right. Hold on, Mr. Brooks. Just, will you take a preliminary breath test for me? Just see yes or no. I don't want to refuse anything. Uh, it's yes or no. It's completely up to you. Yes, I will. Uh, okay, just wait here while I grab it. Why did Brooks want to resolve his situation without being arrested? According to court records, he was on probation for domestic violence and theft offences. He was probably aware that a new arrest or conviction oh, would almost certainly send him back to prison. I know, I know. you just doing your job. Right, just take a deep breath in. Put your mouth over the mouthpiece. Pull as hard as you can until I tell you to stop. 
Blah, 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 stop. Very good. What, what kind of drinks did you have? The breathalyzer returns a blood alcohol reading of 0.108%, above the legal limit of 0 0.08. Rolf has little option now but to charge Brooks with DUI. Some policing experts told us he could have written a citation and drove Brooks home. Others said police are expected to show zero tolerance with drunken driving. For 41 minutes, Brooks and the officers have spoken calmly and respectfully. They even shared a few laughs. Now, Rolf moves to arrest Brooks, and in 45 seconds, he will fatally shoot him. You had about one and a half drinks, but you don't remember what kind of drinks they were? No, sir. All right. I really don't, Mr. Rolf. All right, I think you've had too much to drink to be driving. Put your hands on your back for me. Here, put your hands on your back. Stop fighting! Stop fighting! Stop fighting! Stop fighting! You're gonna get tased! You're gonna get tased! Stop! Mr. Rod! Stop! Stop! You're gonna get tased! Mr. Rod! Hands off the fucking taser! Hands off the taser! Hands off the taser! Let's watch this back and break down what happens. Rolf has signalled or sought Brooks's consent for every action to this point, but he moves to handcuff Brooks swiftly and without clearly telling him he's under arrest. All right, I think you've had too much to drink to be driving. Put your hands on your back for me. Yeah, put your hands on your back. This breaches DUI arrest procedures. Brooks resists and the three tumble to the ground. Hey, hey, stop fighting! Stop fighting! Stop fighting! Stop fighting! Brosnan draws his taser. You're gonna get tased! You're gonna get tased! Stop! Move the wrong! And pushes it into Brooks's leg. Oh, man. Stop! You're gonna get tased! Move the wrong! Brooks grabs the taser. Hands off the fucking taser! Hands off the taser! Stop fighting! Hands off the taser! Both officers' body cameras fall to the ground. Brooks stands up and strikes Rolf with an open hand. As Rolf draws his taser, Brooks fires a dart hitting Brosnan's arm. Rolf fires the taser twice and hits Brooks's body. We hear Rolf using his taser as he chases Brooks. This is a breach of police procedures. Rolf passes the taser to his left hand and reaches for his gun. Brooks looks behind and fires the taser he's holding. We confirmed these taser models with the Atlanta police. Once they're fired twice, they must be reloaded. So at this point, Brooks is unarmed. Rolf drops his taser, draws his handgun and fires three times at Brooks, who is 18 feet away and trying to escape in a busy Wendy's parking lot. Two bullets hit Brooks in the back, one piercing his heart. A third bullet hits this Chevrolet Trailblazer, which had three passengers in it. This photo from the Fulton County District Attorney shows the bullet hole. No one in the car was injured. Rolf shouts at Brooks and appears to kick him on the ground. This image, also provided by the Fulton County DA, shows that moment more clearly. Officer Brosnan approaches and briefly stands on Brooks' shoulder. Meanwhile, witnesses denounce the shooting. Come on, man. The officers stand over Brooks for about a minute before Rolf runs back to his vehicle to get his medical kit. Brosnan continues to stand by. It's over two minutes before Brooks receives medical assistance. He's not moving at all. He's gone. Tell CPR is Rolf administers CPR until emergency services take over. At 11.39 p.m., 15 minutes after he's shot, an ambulance takes Rayshard Brooks to a hospital, where he is later announced dead. Was Rolf justified in shooting a man holding a taser and who was trying to escape? Police procedures on the use of deadly force state that an officer must reasonably believe the suspect possesses a deadly weapon 
and that the suspect poses an immediate threat of serious bodily injury to the officer or others. In a statement made through his lawyer, Officer Rolf said he did use reasonable force because he heard a sound like a gunshot and fearing for his safety and the safety of others, he fired his weapon. The description of a gunshot doesn't square with what Rolf told investigating police at the scene. And it started running as I pursued him. He turned and started firing the taser at me. Okay. And minutes before this, Rolf appears to have been aware that Brooks fired the taser twice. The whole taser probe. From when he fucking shot it at me. Did he hit you with it? I, I felt it, but I don't... This and other evidence will be scrutinised in what has now become a homicide investigation. Rolf has been charged on 11 counts, including felony murder, and both officers with aggravated assault.